Yes, it's true, I am back after a two week vacation. I am back and I am glad to be back. Hi, cheers. While I didn't do any work or release any Gildercam videos, I am excited to get back into the swing of things. I've missed you, I got few, few of you said you missed me, shocking. And I've got so many things bouncing around in my brain from vacation. You may have seen yesterday's video about the new uh, event that I'm doing next month, tracking day, two tracking days for my EP, selling tickets so people can come and just hang out in the studio while we do our thing. Man, it's gonna be fun. But I've got one thing I wanna share with you today. Before I do that, let me give you a brief rundown of what happened on vacation. It was quite eventful. Took the kids to a creek, Saw a snake, promptly left. My identical twin daughters, Maggie and Lila, turned four. Happy birthday. One, two, three, go it. it. You got it, go, go. Really hard. Go. There you go. Puff and puff. We had a slip and slide. And to round out the birthday festivities, Maggie decided to take her brand new scooter that she got for her birthday, somehow flip over the handlebars, land on her chin on the sidewalk, and we spent the evening at the hospital getting stitches. Hey Maggie. What? Where are we right now? Uh, to the doctor office. And what happened? I hurt my chin. I fell down with my scooter. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you happy right now? Let's see, what else? My mom and dad came to visit and got the twins chef outfits for their birthday. Super cute. Found out we have raccoons living in our house, specifically in our attic and crawl space. Thankfully, Liberty Mutual, our homeowner's insurance, is covering all the repairs to fix all the stuff they destroyed. So while we were at the beach for a week, we had workers here ripping down ceilings and walls and fixing everything. Big shout out, Liberty Mutual. Fist bump. You're awesome. Didn't think you were gonna cover that and you did. Classy move. Drove down to the beach with my family and also Pam's sister and her family, which includes Joel Bazaire, who plays bass -doo 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 on lots of my stuff. Spent two days inside because of a tropical storm. Spent the rest of the time not getting in the water at the beach because of double red flags because of the tropical storm. Even with all that, it was a super fun trip. Here's the highlight reel. Okay, let me get to the one thing, the most important thing I wanted to show you today in today's episode of Gilder Cam. You may have noticed all this paper behind me, legal pad, paper, pen. I spent a lot of time on this vacation thinking. That involved, for one, reading a lot of books. Now, for the rest of this video, when I say reading, I mean listening to the audiobook on audible.com, which is fabulous investment. What did I read? These are all books I'd read before. I read The Dip by Seth Godin, which is about when to quit and when to stick it out. I read some of, about half of the book, I think it's called We're All Weird, which is weird, uh, also Seth Godin. I read The Go-Giver, which is just a good, quick read. I recommend reading that regularly. It always gets me fired up. I read most of Good to Great by Jim Collins. Again, another great book. And the final book I read literally yesterday, last day of my vacation, read the whole thing and listened to probably at least half of it a second time, was a book called The One Thing. Here's a nerdy tip for you. If you can get past the weirdness, Audible allows you to listen to books at faster than normal speed. I've talked about this before. My wife makes fun of me, but I literally will listen to books it matter which way you go, at. at triple speed. So this is the one thing at triple speed. Okay, 
What shall I do? Anyway, the one thing by uh, Gary Keller, as in Keller Williams Real Estate, largest real estate company in the world, I think. He wrote the book, and it's a very simple concept. If you haven't read it, I don't recommend books a lot. I think books can be a thing that you hide behind and not actually do real work. This book, The One Thing, is one of those one books that actually allows you to take all the complexity in your life and to really simple it down to what's the most important thing. Back to vacation. So I spent a lot of time thinking and asking myself tough questions specifically about my business and answering those questions and trying to really get some insight into where is my business right now? What's its current reality? Where do I want it to go? And how do I get there? So bigger picture questions, but also drilling down into specifics. Where am I weak? Where am I dropping the ball? What am I doing well? And everything in between. So that started a process of, you know, I watched a few Tony Robbins videos about goal setting and his rapid planning method and all these things that are, that are great and ended up by the end of the week at the beach with this big long list of goals, like 20 plus for the different areas of my life. And all of them good, all of them worth pursuing, none of them, none of them were bad goals. I mean, it put a lot of thought into all of them. And I got home and I was trying to make sense of everything and figure out, okay, with all of this, what am I gonna do tomorrow, like Monday? What's my Monday gonna look like moving forward with all this, all this stuff bouncing around in my head and all this stuff I vomited out on paper, what, how do we actually navigate this in the real world? And for some reason, I had this, this bug in my ear to listen to the One Thing book again, uh, which I hadn't listened to yet uh, over this vacation. And I popped it in and I couldn't stop listening. I literally took about four pages of notes, just, just taking them down as I listened. And again, I've read this book at least four or five times already, but I was just getting new insight and essentially, I had allowed myself to get really complicated, to really make, I mean, 20 something goals is complicated. That's way too much. I felt overwhelmed before I started. And the one thing really hones in on this specifically one question. What's the one thing you can do such that by doing it, you make everything else either easier or unnecessary? So if you look at a big list of goals or a big list of, things you want to change or a big to-do list. The idea is keep asking that question until you get down to the one thing that's the most important of all of them and then focus your attention on doing that. There's a lot more to it. I really recommend you read the book, but for me, it really helped me look at all these goals and look at my business and sitting down and talking with Pam and having these long conversations about where do we want to take the business, which is random. It's June, right? But it just feels like it's time to kind of regroup and restructure kind of like a lot of people do New Year's. I'm just doing it six months late six months early. And we honed in on our one thing, the, the problems we see in the business, the things we're trying to solve, we've been trying to solve with some other different methods. And for example, so this is, this is gonna apply to you as a musician and audio person. I, about a year ago, year and a half ago, I realized that I was not being consistent with the content I was making, specifically the videos. I was sporadic, I would release some, then I would stop, then I would release some, through the advice of a few people and also just kind of my own experience and thinking through things, I decided I'm going to be consistent. And so I, that's when I started doing uh, things like the mixed together series of videos that were coming out every, I think at the time it was every Wednesday or every Monday or Monday, Wednesday or something where I, there was a consistent every week you were getting the same as a, as a subscriber. Now, whether you noticed or not is irrelevant. I, I knew that I was being inconsistent and I wanted that consistency. So that led me to more and more consistency, more videos, more different ideas, eventually led me to doing Gilder Cam, which I did every weekday for the last six weeks or whatever. The point is I can continue to make videos and those of you who are my fans, you will see them and you will like them and you will engage around them. The engagement in my videos, the comments have gone up tremendously in the last f three to six months just because I've been intentional about engaging with you in the comments and starting conversations and it's been great, really great. But I've noticed my subscriber count has pretty much stayed the same. It's, it's not really growing, uh, especially when you consider how many new videos I'm putting out. So essentially, I am creating new value for my existing customer base or existing client base, existing subscriber base, but not really creating, doing anything different to bring in new people. The kind of, the idea is I'm gonna create these videos, they'll be so good, people will share them, YouTube will spit them in front of people and people will watch them and like me. Now, there's a little bit of that, but it's just a tiny little bit and I, you can't build your whole marketing approach on just creating stuff and then hoping someone finds it. It's just, less and less likely to happen. Yes, there's the occasional 
I could do a video that gets two million views in a day because it was just the right combination. But to build an entire business plan and strategy around that doesn't seem very smart. Same thing for music. You can make really, really great music, but if all you do is make it and then slap it up onto all the different distribution channels, that's not going to be enough to actually grow a following. You have to go after figure out ways to get yourself in front of other people. That is why my one thing that I've decided on, that Pam and I decided on for the business for the next six months, is to focus on getting in front of more people. That means I wanna double my subscriber count, both on my email list and my YouTube channel, not for the sake of doubling, not so that I can get some sort of worth from that, but realizing everything else it's that, one, it's that one thing question again, the idea of what's the one thing I can do such that by doing it, it makes everything else easier or unnecessary. And for me, that one thing is getting in front of more people, getting more people into my world of my business so that some of them then eventually purchase the products that I sell and I begin to grow that customer base. Because for a long time, it's just kind of been, I've been serving a, a nice group of people and serving them well, but I've not been doing anything to get new people in. It's not that I don't love you. I love you, but I want to I want to grow a business that, I want to build a business that continues to grow, that continues to help more and more people, and then also provides me with opportunities to expand what I'm doing and to dream bigger. And it all, for me, it all came down to of all the things that I wrote down, it came down to I need to get in front of more people. How do I do that? By making more videos? No, that's not gonna solve the problem. That's what I've been doing. I'll continue to do that. Obviously, I'm still gonna make videos, but that's not gonna be the main strategy for getting in front of more people. I'm gonna spend my mornings, literally 8 a.m. to noon, focusing on finding ways to get in front of more people. That means contacting a lot of people one-on-one -on -one and making connections with other people with different audiences, collaborating, doing a joint venture, not really joint ventures, but you know, finding ways to create value for other people who then, by me creating that value, I get exposed to their audience and maybe I get a few new fans from that. It's grunt work, it's grind work, and it's work that I've not been doing in a long time. And that it makes sense that I'm where I am because I've not been doing that work. So how does this apply to you? If you are just creating music, just putting out good work, I hate to break it to you, but that's not gonna bring the people flocking to you. I know that's popular for people to say. You can probably read that on an inspirational Instagram account. Just do good work and people will flock to you. It just doesn't seem to always work that way. And I think you know that's true. Make good music, absolutely, right? That, that's a given. Absolutely make good music and release it and get it out there, which is what I talk about all the time. But once it's out there, then the real work begins. How are you gonna collaborate with other musicians, with other studio owners, with other brands, with your client that you recorded? How can you collaborate with them to create more exposure for both their music and also for your studio? What are ways that you can get in front of other audiences? What are ways that you can use your skills and your music to do something for someone else who has an audience that doesn't know about you and therefore you get in front of them? It's just just today, this is day one of really focusing on this, and I spent four hours this morning just pounding it, really like thinking through ideas and then executing on some of them. And I recognize it is a long road. It is, I'm gonna win over a few new subscribers here, a few new customers there. There's not gonna be a big windfall, and that's okay, that kind of excites me. The same thing of me wanting to play the Ryman, that's not gonna happen overnight. It's gonna happen through years of intentional, deliberate action in the direction I wanna go. I know this is a longer rant than you probably were wanting in this video, but it's just stuff I felt like after all the stuff I've been thinking about over the last two weeks, had to get a lot of that off my chest. Hopefully it inspires and challenges you a little bit. I'd love to hear about it in the comments, let me know. But that's gonna wrap up today's episode. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll continue to make Gilder Cam if you'll continue to watch it. Rant over.